Okay. Can we be real? Can mm. we be real? Yeah. Let's be real, please. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, I've got a bubble in my throat. That's real. Ready? That's early on because you haven't even got to the Secrets and Sparkles segment. <sighs> no, I know, but I hate that, you know. And I hate it when, you, you know, you see people on TV sometimes and, and they go, yep, yep, <laughs> yep, yep, mm-hmm. Carl Stefanobi, Carlos. Yeah. Big one. Is he? Big one for that. Is that also uh, when you're on live TV, you're kind of thinking about what you want to say, so you pretend to burp, so therefore you can kind of, you <laughs> no. know, fucking compose yourself. So you're like, oh, no. fuck, I don't know what to say here. Uh, no, I, no, no, that's okay. weird. No, I don't. I don't know. I just thought that could be no. a thing. Um, but I love how Whoopi Goldberg always farts on TV. Yeah, it's Isn't great. Isn't that hilarious? Yeah. I've never. <laughs> she? Oh, yeah, she's so <laughs> good. It, mate. It's, she's a fucking legend. It's madness. <laughs> yeah. It is madness. But yeah, whenever Carlos does it. Um, it's such as my kind of my my imagination where Carlos is concerned. I always imagine he's just eaten a steak before he's gotten on air at five thirty in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or just always, or just in the ad break. Just, yeah, right. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. You know, just, well, because I mean, you're on the project. You got a little, you got a little shelf, don't you? No, don't you have a little shelf no. with gear down there? No, like as in like food, <laughs> gear. <laughs> like, you, know, you know what it's like. Yeah. No, 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 no shelves. But no we, shelves. No, but we used to have a lot of lollies and things out before the show. We were Keep grazing, the energy up. grazing, yeah. grazing. Mm. And during Ramadan, um, when the sun, the minute the sun went down, Walid had um, Eid. Oh, sure. I, I loved it. I loved Eid. Mm. Beauty, let's have some Eid. Mm. And the first thing we'd get is a, or I say we, because I just, I just copped on to Willie's Eid. Yep. And um, the first thing we got was a, a date that is customary mm-hmm. to break your fast with a date first. Yep. So we'd a chomp on a nice little date mm-hmm. and then uh, we'd have a little Eid together. Yeah, Stunning. Great. Loved it. Yeah. Mm. Love Ramadan. Mm. I miss it. I miss Ramadan. Anyway. Um, I have news. I have an update. It's not. It's not even Ramadan related, but it is about. It's about. Look, it's about customs. It's about the changing tide. Sure. Of 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 the way we live and of, of the customs that we live with, because we must remember that all customs are invented by human beings. Mm. Okay, let's mm-hmm. not forget that. And there's one that's been invented recently, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say, it's over. It's over. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get a lot of pushback on this one, guys. Be ready. Batten down the hatches. Sure. Derek, batten them down. Mm. Demi Lovato. Baby, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. She's not sorry. And then no. should she be? Because, and she's had a rough couple of years. Oh, mate. It's always rough with Demi. It's always rough for Demi Lovato. And she'd be the first to say it. She would be the first to say, God, life's tough. But she rolls on, you know, and um, and she writes a song about it every now and then. Pretty sporadic, increasingly sporadically, I would say. But she has said that she's, look, she's going back to her, she, her pronouns. She was a they, them. Okay. She said, I'm not anymore. I'm mm-hmm. going back to she, her pronouns because being a they, them was exhausting. Right. Yeah. And okay. I, and I say to that, no shit. Mm. It is exhausting. Mm-hmm. Isn't it exhausting? Well, I'm, I'm a he, him. So I don't, yeah, know, I, know. I don't know what a they, them would be exhausted about. Aren't you exhausted by it? Oh, well, I just, I he, him, mate. And you, you, she, what did you, you, obviously, she, her? Obviously, she heard. obviously, but the, the so whole, we're just... but she, I think pretty predictably has said, look, when you are they, them, you just spend your entire life constantly explaining it to people. Yeah. I don't think it's caught on in the way that would have been hoped. Oh, uh, Mate, have you not seen Instagram? Everyone's Instagram has it up there now. It's on LinkedIn, mate. I know, but what I'm saying is that is a bubble. Do you think? I it's know. Fucking everywhere. I know that, especially your Instagram, but and your LinkedIn. But it's, I'm saying it's not on mine. I, I don't have no, a no, no. But I mean, the people that you follow, oh, yeah, and yeah, the people yeah. that this you, generation, yeah. Mm. And and I think that she is. Well, I'm not putting words in her mouth. She is saying. I'm over it. It's exhausting. Mm-hmm. Everywhere I went all day long, mm-hmm. I had to constantly explain myself to people. She said, I constantly had to educate people and explain why I identified with those pronouns. It's absolutely exhausting. Mm. And that is one of the reasons that have led me to also feel comfortable with the feminine pronoun. She said, I just got tired. Mm-hmm. And for that reason, uh, it's important to continue spreading the word that she's Gone back. Sure. She's gone back. And I think that is going to catch on. Do you, I think so, it's over. I think the they, them's over. Yeah, okay. And, and Not for everybody. Sure. I think there are 
you know, definitely always there are going to be people who go, no, nah, this is definitely, it's sticking. And there's good parts to that. Definitely. And right, also so that- the other thing that, that was pointed out to me about sort of, you know, really assigning your pronouns mm. in your email signatures everywhere. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Is what if you have a gender neutral name? You know, yeah, your yeah, name yeah. is George. Yep. And you're a girl or. Totally. So in that you, way. You're, t- you're just tired of like explaining it. Yeah. Demi Lovato style. Yeah. You're going to find it exhausting mm-hmm. constantly because you're emailing, you know, a lot mm-hmm. and all your clients are thinking you're a guy and you're constantly, every phone call, no, yeah, I'm a mm. woman. Yeah, I know. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I know. I, everyone does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Whereas now we've got this great social convention where you can just pop George, she, her, mm. boom, mm. if you so choose. Sure. So that's a great innovation. Mm-hmm. But I do think, I think that Demi is leading the way here. I think it's going to fade out. of Because uh, now apparently there are companies who are making it compulsory for people to declare themselves. In, in the everything. signature. I think yep. it, I think it automatically can happen in the signature. So, you know, when you sign up to a new job, the HR department asks you this question. Did you know this? No. So when you're filling out the forms, you can be like, oh, you know, tick, 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 tick. And it'll actually ask you what are your pronouns. And then on your email signature, you know how it automatically puts like, you know, like we'd be, a, you know, kiss. Yeah. And there'd be like, you know, Michelle Laurie and then there'd be a photo of Kyle and Jackie O underneath us woo, just woo, to show woo. us that we're part of the big dogs. Yeah, breakfast with the stars. Breakfast with the stars. Sure. She, her on your, you know, but you didn't do that. It's you automatically can, put in there. You can choose or you must. I'm just guessing. Oh, well, I don't. We don't know I don't, about that I don't particular. know that detail, but we, it's getting asked in the initial onboarding. Yeah. I'm down with can. I'm not down with must. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm totally. down with you can do whatever the fuck you want. It's your mm, life. Mm-hmm. You can call yourself whatever the fuck you want. Totally. But I'm not down with you must. You have to, and this is the way things are going now. And if you don't get on board, you're a fuckwit. Yeah. If you don't get on board, you hate people. No, mm. not getting on board with that. Mm. And certainly, I think it's kind of brave of Demi to say, uh, just letting you know, uh, two sex. Yeah. Two sex. Yeah. Everyone, hey, two sex. Yeah. Two sex. <laughs> two sex. Two sex. Uh, you nude guy. <laughs> He's coming especially, back. <laughs> especially you. This is weird because this is my house. He's so just... I don't know what. But two sex, <laughs> just letting everyone know. You know, remember how I was they, them? Yeah. Not anymore. Mm. I'm, I'm going back to her, she. she okay, her. so you say brave. Why? Just because people are going to troll her? Yeah. That's basically what she's brave for. Like there people are, are going to say some shit. There are a lot of hard cases who will be going, oh, you're wrecking it. You're oh, wrecking it. You're going to make all those people who hate us, a lot of them don't hate you, but they're going to go, oh, you're making it look like it's it's dumb or look like it's not important mm-hmm. or, you know, you were one of us and now you're not. And mm-hmm. there are some people who can be like, you know, she, yeah. you know what she's doing? She's keeping it real. Mm. She's being real. She's just going, it's exhausting. I'm, over. I'm sick of it. I'm sick to the guts of it. I'm sick to the guts of talking to people about why am I they, them, guys. It's not worth it. Over it. And I think it's also a good thing to do as well, not really give a fuck about, like don't don't live your life worrying about what's everyone going to say. Just look after your own backyard. If you want to be a he, him or a she, her or a they, what, whatever you want to do. Fill right? your boots. But as long as you're happy with your backyard, yep. don't give a fuck about what's going on with your neighbours, mate. Right, mate. Like just enjoy. Yeah. And do what you want to do. Yeah. What would Demi Lovato do? That's what would Demi my new Lovato thing. do? That's my new thing. So you are a, a she her. And uh when you, you saw bet. when you saw this come out, mm. when did when did this start? Like three years ago, two years ago? When, when did all this come out? Well, I don't know. If you you know if Whenever you, it came out, yeah. did you think about putting it out there? No, I Ever. did not. No. And no, because I, I don't have any gender identity issues. Mm. I no, I'm a woman. Mm. And um happy to be. Don't I, I'm happy for other people to become women, happy for people to who were women to become men, happy for people to be theys, happy for everybody. Mm. But there was a moment where my kids tried to bully me into it. Uh, it was maybe about a year ago where they said something about what are your pronouns or you, you should put your pronouns on something. And I said, fuck off. Put my pro- <laughs> it's going to be ridiculous. Yeah. And they went, no, mum, mum, no, you can't say that. And I said, well, I can say whatever I want. Yeah. And secondly, anybody who looks at me knows I'm a woman. So and they were, oh, God, they were horrified, like looking around the walls, like, shit, I hope nobody heard that. And I was like, 
what is wrong with you people? Like, who is so, telling you that I ha- well, that I have to declare my pronouns? Who's telling you this? Is that a lesson at school? Is is it a subject to school like no, social studies or something like that where this has come ones, up? Mate, you, you think it's being learnt from these TikTok? Ones. Yes, of course it is. Their algos like anybody else's. It's just feeding into itself. Mm. And yeah, how dangerous. Yeah. How dangerous is that sometimes when you think about that? Mate, it is a nightmare. Yeah. And I come from a generation that was so much about individuality. Everybody should be free to be themselves. Our music, our movies, our whole go was shaking off this idea that we all have to be the same, that we all have to follow these tight rules. We, it was all about being rebellious, being yourself, no peer pressure. Peer pressure sucks just because everyone else is doing something. That's a really good indication that you shouldn't do it or don't ever feel like you have to do what everyone else is doing. That was drummed into us. Mm. Peer pressure sucks. And now I'm watching everybody but, but, like, well, no, uh, well, well, no, this no, is what everyone's doing yeah, now, guys. This is but, actually what we're all doing. So you you have to do it because this is just, we've all decided, yeah, we've decided, yeah. So this is what we're all doing now and this is what we're all saying. So but yeah, it's, it's social it? media, right? So therefore it's coming at you in that way where it's not done in the way that we were peer pressured. We were peer pressured by our friends, our groups around us saying, we're doing, we're going to go and smoke. No, Let's go peer- and smoke. So we'd go and we'd make a decision on peer that. But now it's coming at us pressure. in a subliminal way though, isn't it? Right. But it's also, in, it's in corporations. It's in. Yeah. I mean, let's but they're be, bowing, can we be they're real? bowing over. Can we be real about the fact that we were kicked out of a workplace, our company, and we won't name it. But can we be real about that? Sure, if you want to be. That we were kicked out of a, a shared, a co-working place mm-hmm. because of comments I made exactly like these comments I'm making now, actually. Yeah. And other people who worked there said that they made them uncomfortable and called me transphobic. Mm-hmm. So that's peer pressure to me. That's that's a group of people going, um, we don't say that. We don't Do- believe that. Do it? No, we don't know. So you you can't come here. I I think this scenario should be explained a little bit more clearly for those listening because we understand what we're talking about here, yeah. right? But for the, for someone listening right now who has no idea what you're talking about, do you want to explain that in a bit more detail? We don't know how much detail to go into without being infla- more inflammatory, but it's just. But ba- yeah, go ahead. We'll. we'll well, just you're going to word it much smarter. You mean the than specifics? That, I think so because I think someone listening right now is 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 probably thinking right now if the, if you're hearing this, hang on, what what happened? Well, I made a social media post saying that you know about a honey birdette photo, an ad, where a person who I perceived as a man was wearing lingerie, and I said, God, isn't this just getting boring now? Mm-hmm. Seeing brands using men to advertise women's clothing. Mm -hmm. I also made the point that the person looked stunning in the image. Mm -hmm. But I misgendered the person because they uh, refer to themselves as a they, them, which I didn't know and I apologised for later. I did not know that Um, and I didn't do that deliberately. But it was certainly a massive, blew up into a massive shit fight and, uh, yeah, so due to that we were kicked out of a workspace because the space had a uh, a policy of inclusion. Was that right? Was that what the word was? Yeah. In, and yeah. I was like, well, hang on a minute. You're excluding me. <laughs> it mm. doesn't make sense. Mm. And, and uh, yeah, so the, your production company was moved out of that office. Kicked out, let's Kick, be honest. Kicked out. Yep. Um, so, I mean, you know, that's what I'm saying. To me, that's just peer pressure. It's just like... You know, that's what I say. It's not just social media. It is in my children's world. Mm-hmm. But I this is why I think Demi Lovato was being brave because I think there is such a strong movement that is not by any means the, the mass movement in the world, but I think in the industry that she works in, that we work Entertainment. in. Entertainment. Yeah, it's very strong and powerful. Mm. That Media, even, entertainment, yeah, it's all the same thing. That even and she's she's bisexual. She's always you know, um, she's always said that and identified that way. Um, so she's a member of the community, mm-hmm. LGBTQI community. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think she's going to take a lot of heat for for this. I think yeah. So I think she's being really brave. She's always been a really brave kid. Mm. 
she's always said and done a lot of stuff that I think is really brave and she's mm. made mistakes and we all have. But I, Which makes her, for, for me personally, a, a, a very likeable person. I, I really totally. like the fact that she is that person. She's one of and those she doesn't people. doesn't give a fuck. I don't, I don't want to, you know, um, yeah, I, I find her interesting. Genuinely, because she's one of those people who's been working since she was like two or three. Mm. She's one of those kids, mm. you know, who's been supporting her family mm-hmm. since she was a toddler. Mm-hmm. So those people always are always edgy and mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. she's seen a lot of shit and I, totally. I don't know, you know? Mm-hmm. And she's tough. She's a tough mm-hmm. little kid and yeah, I I started like I I'm kind of joking, but I'm not joking when I say that I think the tide has turned. The tide has turned uh, or it's turning because I, I don't, Turning, yeah, turning, I, but I, I think, wouldn't say it's turned. I think she's I think a, it's still very much Yes, but I think she's a genuine influencer. To turn it. And I think when someone like she says, someone like her, says, I'm just I'm not doing that anymore, guys. It's not that important to me. Mm-hmm. It was just exhausting and I've decided it's not that important to me, obviously. You know, um, she's still fighting out her own battles, but th- this particular hill is not one she's going to die on. Sure. I think that's a really important statement about priorities. Mm. What What's important? What are Where are the battle lines? Mm-hmm. You know, and again, I've said it many times, she's living in America where women's reproductive rights are not only threatened but being torn apart. In many states, drag is illegal in certain Which states. Which is fucking wild. Yes, isn't it? Absolutely. They're talking about capital punishment for pedophiles in some states, which sounds like, oh, okay, well, that makes sense to a lot of people. Except that in a lot of these states, they also are trying really hard to draw parallels between uh, drag performers and pedophiles. Right. Okay. So this is really insidious mm. stuff mm-hmm. that we see in countries around the world where we end up with the death penalty for homosexuality. Yeah. So I dangerous, mean, dangerous times. Serious, <clears throat> dangerous yep. threats mm-hmm. to LGBTQI yeah. people. Yeah. And I think that Demi Lovato is being an influencer in terms hey of- Hey, guys, let's not worry about that. Let's worry about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, I've gone down this weird uh, rabbit hole, I guess you would call it, Mm -hmm. with podcasting, or the podcast that I'm listening to, Mm -hmm. and I've gone into paranormal podcasts. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Do you ever listen to paranormal podcasts? There's one. Oh, i I got to find what it's called. You find it. It's like a This American Life, but it's for, it's like a storytelling podcast like that, but it's for like paranormal. Oh, please, Uh, please tell me, because I'm like collecting them now. I'm collating them. Mm -hmm. And um, there's one called Spooked. Mm. that I found so good. And it is people telling their stories. And I found this incredible story. It reminded me of, I've got a couple of friends, two that spring to mind, both of whom around my age, one of them's a little bit older than me, both Greek. Mm -hmm. And in their families, they had nonnas who were real spooks, real spooky ladies who like lifted curses off people and stuff and presumably put curses on people for money. Like for cash, yeah. Well, like one of them, her her nonna really ran a business. Like you know how you go and see, well, you don't probably, but go and see psychics, psychics and yeah, clairvoyants. Yeah, yeah. You pay a hundred bucks, whatever, yep. and sit in their front room for an hour. Um, hers was one of those mm. nonna, but on top of the the kind of clairvoyance was oh, and by the way, you cursed. I'll take care of that for you. Or oh, could you put a curse on this person? Yeah, no drums. <laughs> no drums. Yeah, and and then another Greek friend of mine, her um. They they f- figured out felt like there was a curse on a member of their family, and so they went and got somebody to lift the curse and all that. And I've got a lot of actually a lot of Albanian friends, weirdly, and they're always they're all related. And um, they they love a bit of the old evil eye business. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've got an evil eye thing on my front door. Okay. Yeah, that they they sort of convinced me that that's a really important thing to have. In sure. Your so you believe. In the yeah, it's, I you have a you have a. I'm always a you know why not kind of person sure. with that stuff. I yeah, am yeah, superstitious, yeah. and I think, oh mm-hmm. well, you know, why well, wouldn't you? Have you ever thrown a curse out there for any anybody? Have you ever mm, no. no? And uh, have you been? Do you feel like you you could have been cursed? I guess. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but I would never do it because I'm fundamentally a Buddhist, so I think, oh, the karma. Totally. Oh yes. Yeah. As yeah. if, as if You'd I be would fucked up. Ah, oh, yeah. I would never put a curse on anyone. Yeah. Um. But I think, yeah, why not? If you, if you can put an evil eye on your front door, why wouldn't you? 
What is that? It's those beautiful blue, the shape. Google it and you'll see it's gorgeous. You can wear them as jewellery. Oh, yeah. And, and it's what, supposed it, like, take, to protect, protect away. you, ward yeah. off. The, my Albanian friends told me because one time after I'd lost weight, I ran into these two girls, uh, two women um, in Aldi. Yep. They're sisters. And uh, one of them said, oh, mate, you look good. You look good. She goes, there'd be too many people actually, don't you think? To her sister, don't you think there'd be too many people thinking she looks good? She looks too good. She looks too good. You'll have the evil eye. You'll have the evil eye on you. She did some kind of prayer or something. Because her sister went, you. yeah, yeah, they will, they will. Yeah. And, she goes, and you're just standing there at Aldi. In Aldi. By the, <laughs> by the special buys. <laughs> I said, do you think? She goes, yeah. And then <laughs> and did a, did a prayer or something over yeah. me. She goes, there you go. You'll be right now. Actually, you know, that that does make a bit of sense. I always tell Yulia, like, if we're going out for a nice dinner, mm. don't, like, splash it all over Instagram because people that don't like us will try and fucking drag us the fuck down. Right? Yes. It's something yeah. along those lines. It's like if you get too many If um, life just goes too good, don't show it. Yeah, right. Well, I found on this Spooked podcast, I heard this amazing story and I thought I have to share it with you. And it's being told by a fellow called Nestor Gomez. He is Guatemalan mm. and um, you can find him online. NestorGomezStoryteller.com is his website and he's Guatemalan. He says, I'm Guatemalan undocumented. So he lives in the States, proudly undocumented, I guess. He's a performer, a poet, a writer, T-shirt designer, dancer, publisher and uh Author of Your Driver Has Arrived, which I guess is about his Uber driving and all that. Mm -hmm. Fabulous guy. But this is a spooky story about something that happened to him in childhood. What's happened is his mum has been away for a little visit, been away to college. Do you know mm -hmm. that? She's been to jail. Right. We, we won't get into why. Nothing major. Anyway, the point is she's come home from jail and she's just not herself. Mm -hmm. I'll let Nestor explain to you what he means by that. She always has a clean set of clothes on. She always combs her hair. She always has a little bit of makeup on. Just enough. But this time, she hasn't combed her hair in days. She hasn't gotten any sleep. I can barely recognize her. She doesn't even say hi to us. She just starts running from room to room. Her knees started to tremble and she just faints. And my father just picks my mother up and takes her to the bed. My mother just stays there like in a coma and she's not getting any better. So I ask around, what can I do? What can I do, says Nesta. Sure. He doesn't know what to do. He's like, I don't feel like this is a job for the doctor. He's, he can't afford a doctor anyway, he said. And then this is going on for two weeks because mm. initially people are like, oh, she's just tired. Jail's like really tiring. But then she was there for two weeks. She's not getting any better. So everyone around the house and around the family is going, we've got to do something. And someone else around the family had an idea. And then this happened. And suddenly there's a commotion in the house. I start asking, who, who, who's that person? Who's that person? And immediately everybody just shush me. Shh, don't talk about her. She's a bruja. You don't want to make her mad. Don't say anything bad about her. She's a bruja. Okay. She's a bruja. A bruja, I've learned from Nesta, is a person in your family who does black magic. Oh, okay. And that made me wonder, I wonder if bruja ha comes from bruja. Maybe. I'm going, I have. I forgot to Google that. Maybe yeah. you could do that, Matthew, while we crack on. Yep. So there's a bruja in the house and mm. she's come to have a look at mum. She goes into, she's ushered into mum's bedroom. The kids, of course, are told, get out of here, you kids. <laughs> But Nesta goes, no, I, I'm going to have a sneaky peek. This doesn't happen every day. I wonder what goes on in there. This mm -hmm. is what he sees. I try to look into the room and I see the outline of the bed. And I see this shadow of somebody I don't know. She's getting close to my mother. And as she comes close to my mother, I almost see her. And I'm afraid again. And I hide a little bit more. I'm wondering what she's doing to my mother. Is she, is she praying over my mother? Is she passing an egg all over my mother's body? Like I heard people say that that's what they do. Is she doing that? Is she passing an egg over your mother's body? Right. I don't know. Yeah. Well, whatever she's doing, she comes out of the bedroom and, boy, has she got news for Nesta's dad. And then she tells my father, Mm-hmm. She's been cursed. 
She's been cursed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's been cursed. Yeah. And then they settle on a deal, an amount of money, and then she lifts the curse. So it's happy days. <laughs> but isn't that fabulous? Yeah. I look, yeah, I, I can only tell you that I know two great women mm. who are not, you know, they're professional women. Yeah. And and they say, yeah, it's real. It exists. My nonna used to, you know, be involved in the in the curse world. So this is something new for you? Like is this something you've always dabbled around or no, well, like is this just something that's, you know? It's something I've always loved. There was a book in my primary school library called um, Ghosts. I think that was imaginatively titled Ghosts. <laughs> and it had, um, and I remember it had, you know, a photo pa- thing in the middle and all these like terrible photos of a ghost orbs. in a window here, you oh, know, yeah. orbs and all that shit. And yep. and I just used to get it out every mm. week, every yep. fortnight. I just yep. loved it. Yeah. So I've always loved ghost stories. But um, but it just reminded me of this one. I thought, oh, yeah, I thought about those two women I know. Mm. In and, Aldi. Yeah, well, there's those, the Albanians, and then the Greeks mm. as well. And, yeah, so one lady, her her nonna did it in the front room and and she said she, she remembers being there one time and these ladies came over and they were like, oh, can you give us a reading and just tell us if there's any curses and all that we need to worry about. And as part of the reading, the nonna said, you're going to hear about a death very, very soon, like very soon, and dead set, the phone rang. And they went, oh, uncle so-and-so's just died. And the women screamed their heads off and started attacking her and calling her a witch, the nonna, like she had killed him. Right. And so that one did not work out very well. Yeah. Except she had done exactly, like she it proved that she was great at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they just freaked out and screamed Far and they're hitting her. And so that was not a great day. And then the other lady, yeah, she was telling me her family member, they felt like he just kind of got really weird and dark and possessed almost or mm-hmm, something. Mm-hmm. And uh, the family went, okay, there's a curse on Gary. There's a curse on Gary. Gary's not a very Greek name, but whatever his name was. And th- again, just a very normal suburban professional family. And they went and found a nonna mm. to come around and do their gear. What are they doing when they do the? Don't know. Are they saying? Are they saying things? Yeah, they were. She was definitely my mate. Inaldi was definitely saying something, but it was fast, and I just couldn't quite, you know. Catch um, on to what's going no, on. No, and plus mm. it was that week at Aldi where they had the snow gear, so I was a bit distracted because I was trying to <laughs> get a parker, a new parker for Lou. So I was like, come on, mate. Um, you know, so there's a lot going on at once. <laughs> if you, our beautiful listeners, know any more about this than I do, please can you let us yeah. know? Can you contact us and let us know? Do, if you have a, a curse expert in the family or if you've seen it, if you know anything about it, if please. You've been cursed, <gasps> if you've been cursed, if you've, if you want to share, if you've cursed someone. Yeah. I'm just mad about this stuff. And I know yeah. because we are such a cultural melting pot of a nation mm. that there will be people among us who go, oh, yeah, mm. my nan, my mm-hmm. nonna, my mm-hmm. bung wai, my whatever, you know, my um, – what are other names for nanas? My noji, mm-hmm. my – whatever the other, other names. Grandma. Nanas are grandma. Yeah. <laughs> yep, she was mad for it. Mm. I'd love okay. to hear about it. Yeah, great. Mm. All right, secrets and sparkles. Oh, terrific. I'm empty, mate. Oh. Gosh, from last, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just cheers it out. Cheers yes. it out with the eyes and the teeth. You're getting the teeth. Yeah, now teeth. Okay. Yep. If you've got a secret uh, and you want to share it with Michelle, go to the link in the bio, or you can go to Michelle's Instagram page. <gasps> love it. Love Have it, you love over the last few weeks got a standout secret, something that's standing out in your mind that you're chatting about at the spa with uh, know, with Donna? It's, it's the it's the it's the undie guy, isn't it? Yeah, it's the new. I fucked my cousin when I was a teenager. Yeah, it's the new one of those. It's yes, I go to the gym and steal other men's undies. Yeah, there's a lot. Mm. There's a lot, and there there's a lot that other people want to talk about, and and people kind of have been stopping me in the deli at Coles to go. Oi, I've got some thoughts. Mm. So, yeah, it's good. It's, okay. it's just got Australia talking. It has, hasn't it? Mm. All right. Uh, this is secret number one. I would like to share with you a fetish that I have had for a very long time. I have a fetish of a diaper and basically adult wedding man dance. And for a long time, I have hidden... Um, wedding diapers for adult pleasure, wedding mantis, um, pooing in the swimmers, in the shower, and it really turns me on. 
and I enjoy watching other people do it. And it will be my dying dream for someone to sit on me and wet their pants on top of me. So it's hard one to hear there, but there's a bit of, yeah, uh, there's a lot going on with the-, the Talk poo- us through it again. Pooing in the togs. Okay, I heard that. Um, I like to poo in my bathers in the shower. No? Yeah, yeah I, just, think that's what, I think that's what it was. And then also the, the dream is to, to have someone sit on her and wee on her. Well, that's easy enough to arrange. Golden shower. Yeah. I mean, no. that's been out there. Hmm. Um, but how did she start? She seemed to be talking a long time before she got to pooing in her bathers. But I mean, that's a- Gosh. I think she was explaining it's a fetish. It took a while to get there. Right. You know, I think when you're sharing a secret like this, it's you're trying to work it out in your head how you're getting this across. Plus because who's talking a secret out aloud? Plus she seems to be in the car, which I like, you know. <laughs> yeah, with, the, um, with the blinkers on in the yeah, background. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. She's just like, I love people who. I'll speak a phone this one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and then I would have liked a bit of, <laughs> a bit of, yeah, and I'll also have a Big Mac and yeah. um, large fries. Fuck, I would have laughed. Fuck it, I'll if have a milkshake. Get, She's in the back of an Uber. Because I'm hoping to shit myself <laughs> later in the bay. That's, thanks. Yeah, I'm worried of Uber. That's what I was thinking. She's in an Uber. She's driving an Uber. <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's a fascinating. Yeah, and thank you for sharing once bundle. again. Yes. yes, you're brave. Yeah, I mean, oh, shitting in your bathers. <laughs> Better start. Okay, everyone. Okay, first thing is, first things first. Don't fucking laugh. Okay, it's going up on the board. This oh is yeah, another, the, okay. The blackboard's back. Yeah, this is part of the this is part of the course uh, that I'm teaching. If anybody wants to enrol, um, <laughs> just go to the website. Matthew's building. We don't even have a website, mate. Oh, well, you're going to have to <laughs> build the website and yes, then we can, then. yeah, because this could be an online course. All backwards. This could be an online course, actually. Yeah. We'll charge a couple of grand okay. for this, yeah? yeah? How to sit through a story like this. When your mate says, I'd like to shit in my bathers, mm. I got you covered. Mm. Okay? A master class. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to teach you how to not freak out and mm. just sit with it. Not mm-hmm. not sit with the shit in the bathers, but no. just sit with the story. Sitting with the shit What's in the bathers. What's that about, shitting in the bathers? It, that's a child. That's a very early childhood thing. I'm going to tell you straight up and down. That is early childhood. That's a person who shat themselves when they were six months old and went, yes. Oh, really? Yeah. Isn't it? Okay. Or someone said, good girl. And she's just gone, yes. There's, can... there's something very early childhood about this to me. I'm getting early childhood vibes. Okay. When's the last time you shat yourself in your bathers? Well, well, uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> be honest. Being honest, uh, <laughs> not that long ago. Someone's bugs bush, party. Bush, bush walk, mate. You and your bush walking. <laughs> Christ, is hectic bush. <laughs> no, no, what are you doing? Well, okay, what are you doing? How much mate? coffee are you drinking well, on the, your bush this walks? Is the, this is the thing. So you go, you go out in the bush <sighs> walk. You're out there for ten k's or whatever. You know, for twenty k's. And then no. you get that walk going where you're trying to hold it all in and then you're saying to your wife, Jesus. we're going to have to speed this up. Get a you know? treadmill, you animal. Oh, yeah. Stay home near the bathroom. We're getting out in the outdoors, mate. And then oh. next thing you know. You're not shitting your baby. Little nuggets in the undies. Oh, my God. He's lying, Matthew. <laughs> no, Look at his face. no, mate. He's looking at you mate, like you are lying. No, I'm not I, talking I, Yeah, he is. He's it's talking. happened. No. And I don't. I, mean, I know you're a prude, and you've never seen a skid mark on your husband's no. undies. But fucking, I can't look at someone. Let's get in the sexually. real world. I can't look at someone sexually if they've shat themselves on a bushwalk, <laughs> and I know about it. I can't ever. Yeah, know. well, the sex did dry up there for that month. Oh, actually, let's be honest. She's too hot to have a husband who shits himself <laughs> on a bushwalk. <laughs> she's like, I she's know. Russian, mate. I know. She wasn't proud. She could. <laughs> you know, hopefully, she hasn't talked about it with her friends. Hopefully her friends don't listen to this. No. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. I bet you are a bit prudish though than most people, I think. Oh, believe I me. Think, look, I am amongst not. my mates, if I said, hey, boys, have we all, have we all shouted yeah, ourselves on the bushwalk? Women and don't Everyone goes, yeah, mate. Oh. Don't even feel bad about it. Yeah, but I don't bushwalk. That's gross. But. Why don't we go for a bushwalk together? Oh, that's pe- pe- never <laughs> happening ever in the world. <laughs> I'm not prudish, believe me. But no, I know. I don't need to, to know about people's shit and certainly... Don't well, me. you asked. I, I'm interested in your shit, though, our friend who's mm. up. Right. Well, it's not a fetish, though, mine. I'm not like bushwalking. Isn't it, though? Because you do talk about it a lot. So but I feel like. And shooting. Yeah, I feel like you're potentially masturbating about it later. <laughs> the time that you told me and Matthew about your fucking bushwalks. I don't know, mate. Listening back know. to the podcast. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what goes on, but you do bring it up a lot. Two times. Oh, feels like more, doesn't it? And it's a lot, it gets longer every time. Okay. 
Speaking of which, um, shitting in your bathers. Now, did she mention in the shower? I thought she did. Uh, I think she did, yeah. Mm. Mm. But, but that's just smart. Um, well, it, yeah. yeah. And I like that. There's a drain. Yeah, I like that. Mm. Um, that's just cutting it down on your cleanup. I I think that's that's early childhood stuff. Mm. That's real straight up. Someone's just really celebrated a shit <laughs> that she's done in her, in her bathers as a kid. That's how that sh- is that how that stuff comes out where someone goes, "Well done," I think and then so. you're like, "Right, I've got to do more of that." Because I remember when I had little kids, I read somewhere they said, "Never shame your kid about their shit." You know how you know if you open up the nappy, sorry, you open up the nappy, never go, "Oh, oh no, it's a bloody bomb." Oh God, I don't want to kill myself. That's so bad. <laughs> never do that <laughs> because. Because in their tiny pea brains, that mm. tells them that their poo's bad, that they're bad, that right. something that's come out of them is bad. Yeah. It can make them never want to shit again. Wow. My father refused to take that on board and he used to quite often say, what do you feed that kid, goannas? And things like that. Sure. And we changed the nappy in front of him. So he's not <laughs> was not a helpful person. But uh, it's funny. But, um, but yeah, so I think someone's really celebrated um, a shit in her bathers one time. All I can think about is the time Louis, he's not going to thank me for this, but we were in a public pool and um, it had this really fantastic little tiny kid's pool that's like that deep. Mm. And I'm standing behind him, bored out of my brain, and he's sitting on the ground in those little swimming bathers kind of nappy things, and I'm thinking, what's that dirt on the ground? It's weird, and I'm kind of swishing it away with my foot, <laughs> this dirt. And then I went, that is coming out of his abetus. <laughs> and I know that what happens when somebody shits in their bathers in the public pool. <laughs> I've got to stop you for a second. <laughs> my Siri is. Is she listening to me? <laughs> It's putting all of the words that you say. It's so great. <laughs> she loves it. I just don't want anything to be Googled here or anything like no, that. No, this yeah, is great. Okay. This is, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. This is getting you red flagged on the ASIO. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the words that you were saying. Oh, my God. Stop. Small <laughs> children yeah. shitting in pools. Yeah. <laughs> and then bushwalking with my Russian bride. There's so many red flags, mate. You're oh, fucked. Oh. Secrets. Okay, it's all good. It's, it's Tell stopped. me your it's secrets. Stopped. It's fucking stopped. Okay. Anyway, oh, it's fuck. still listening though. Um, <gasps> so I realised w- what they do in, in the public pools bags is if your child shits in them, yes. they, everyone has to get out of the pool for like two hours and they yeah. have to clean it. Clean it, yeah. And I thought, oh, fuck that. So I just picked Louie up and we left. Oh, you didn't own it? No. Is that what you Well, I owned the kid. I had to. Yeah. But it was too late. Didn't mm. know anything about that. Yeah. But yeah, I just went yoink and just so, yeah. we got changed and we got the fuck around. The chlorine will fix it. That's what I say about everything in a pool. Oh, it's the chlorine will kill that. Yeah. That's fine. That's great. So, um, yeah, back to the shit. I mean, I just don't know what else to say really. Mm. It's early childhood stuff. Yeah. I, I just want to know if... If Louis comes up to you and is like, hey, I'm going to start listening to Can We Be Real, are you going to give him a little heads up that you've no. really put him on blast? No. You know me. I don't like to catastrophize. I don't like to create a storm. <laughs> Better, I think, to wait and, and react. Put it out. React. <laughs> put it out. Yeah, yeah, react to the storm. Yeah, because I can't imagine that would be a great arvo. No, you know, in the lounge room. No. Louis not going to survive the group chats. The when he's <laughs> Hang on a second. This and I- is a story about me here. <laughs> I, know his, I know his attention span and there's a nerve fucking way he's making it this deep. Yeah, this is quite deep. It's quite deep. This is 30 this minutes is in. Yeah, yeah. this is deep. All right, let's get into, uh, well, first, how do you want to file it with the poo Jesus in the in the, uh, in the togs? Hang on. <laughs> Let me look at my notes. Mm. Oh, it's not perfectly understandable. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> <laughs> a little. <coughs> I'm going to say good luck you fucked. Yeah, good luck you fucked. Um, but it looks so, sort of a great way. Yep. Just because I like the sound of it. However, I, I, I don't ever want to share a shower with you. Or an Uber. <laughs> or an Uber. For that story. <laughs> <laughs> Although I listen to my headphones, so go for your life. Yeah. All right. Ring whoever you want and tell them about your shitting in your bathers. Okay. <laughs> I'll never know about it. Uh, here we go. Secret number two. Okay, my secret is when I'm shopping at Woolworths, I like to stick my nose in the freezer and breathe in really deep. That's just like my guilty pleasure. 
I like that. Yeah. A few fetishes going on today. Oh gosh. How good are our listeners? Mm. <laughs> what a crew. <laughs> Um, we got to have a listener party. Mm. That's my first thought. And I love that. I'm going to try that. Mm. We're going to try that. Freezer mm. sniffing. Real deep. I, I think it might hurt a little. I feel like it, it's yeah. going to. Mm. Is the air fresh in there? I guess it is. I don't know. That's mm. the big industrial freezer. So it's probably moving around a bit. And is it, are, you, are you going like, are you sniffing the fish fingers? Oh, it's going to have a bit of panko about it, isn't it? <laughs> A bit of panko about it, a bit of the, that oil that's on the chips and that. It's going to have a bit of that. A bit of, oh, a bit of that. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, well, I'm going to try it and let you know. I'll text yeah. you. I'll text you. Yeah. The Savo. She's obviously, so her favourite section is the freezer section. Do you have a favourite section in the in the shop? I love the fruit and veg. Yeah. I just love that that area. A good fruit and veg oh. section is uh, just is the joy of life, isn't it? Actually, one of the first things that Yulia noticed about Australia mm. is our Woolworths and Coles abundance fruit and veg yeah. sections because in Europe, yes, it's very t- your grocery stores are very tiny, yeah, and you've got like you know your little tomatoes, your little you know your boxes, yeah. She couldn't believe that we have mountains of apples and Don't mountains we? of bananas and so mountains of all this stuff, colourful and shiny. And um, during COVID, remember when we wouldn't for a minute, like oh, yes, and and you how. Get mints. Depressing it was, and it was frightening. Yeah, I, I would find myself getting anxiety about that. Going to the supermarket, and there'd be no, you know, uh, onions for a day, half a day, or something. Let's mm. not even go into the toilet paper. But there'd just be weird things not there for a day, and you'd, it was scary. Yeah, that's how lucky we are. Mm. That's what I love too about going to another country, like going to Asia, for example, and going to a supermarket and seeing the different fruits and veggies that I don't know. Yeah. The, those funny fruits with all the spines on the outside. And <laughs> lychee. Stuff. I love lychee Hell, so much. Yeah. And Louis now loves, um, is it dragon fruit? Mm. It's like that melon that you cut in mm-hmm, half and it's mm-hmm. bright pink with the black dots. Yep. Loves it. Mm. And he is a picky eater, as he always tells me. Mm. Um, yeah, so that yeah, fruit and veg is your favourite section as well. You're not a freezer. Now that you say it. Not a freezer aisle. Well, no, my favourite section is the special buys at Aldi. Yeah. Oh. Right in the middle there. Oh, love it. Mm. So good. Mm. God, what did I get there recently? I mean, this is just a really good segment, isn't it? Just me looking up into the bright light, just, <laughs> just picturing the special buys. The oh. net for a trampoline. Oh, yes, yeah, something like that. <laughs> and gardening gloves and, oh, God. They had, um, they had clothes. And, and now that we've got Edie in the family, I can go back to the kids' stuff again. My brother hates uh, oh, it's good times, isn't mm. it? Yeah. Sewing machine. That's what I got. I got a sewing oh, wow. machine there. Bloody hell. hundred bucks. Okay. Are you using it? No, it's still in the box. <laughs> <laughs> hundred bucks. Yeah. Why, why, why not? Mad yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. How are you filing the freezer sniffer? Oh, perfectly understandable. Okay. Love it. And I'm trying at the Savo and it might be my new thing. Let's hope. Wouldn't it be terrific to get a new thing at my age? Freezer sniffing. Yes. I could try meth as well. So, I mean, just as long <laughs> yeah. as you get a new thing. All right. Well, if good. you want to share a secret with us, go to the link in the bio. The link tree is also on Michelle's Instagram page mm. as well. And we'll have more secrets next week. Okay, guys. Oh, my God. I love this. Mm. I kind of love this. I should look, give it that kind of. Because only because look, there's a potential for something to go bad here. Okay. But go with it. Okay. Have you heard the story about the orcas? In the um, look around Gibraltar, around the Straits of, of Gi- Gibraltar, which mm-hmm. is hard for me to say, Gibraltar, mm-hmm. who are attacking boats. Yeah, you haven't? No, no, no. No, okay. Well, it's fascinating for a lot of reasons, and um, because it, it's never happened before. Apparently, it started in about 2020. This family of orcas, killer whales, mm. started attacking boats in a way that it was different. And, and like really um, targeted and really organised mm-hmm. because, of course, they're so intelligent, right? Yeah. And when it happened more than once, more than twice, more than three times, people started really taking notice and, and crews started filming it. And the attacks have become more and more serious to the point now where these whales, killer whales, are ripping off the rudders, like quite specifically mm. Tearing off, they're disabling boats. So it can't move. Yeah. 
they don't want them there. Mm. Now, I'm sure lots of whales and lots of things in the ocean don't want <laughs> boats and don't want things sure. around them. Yeah. But they deal with it. Mm. They, you know, sometimes sharks charge boats and all sorts of things. This family and what they've figured out from observing the behaviour and all that stuff now, the scientists have figured out that there's one female leading the group. She has taught and continues to teach the younger members of the group how to attack the boats, how presumably what rudders are, what they do, yeah, and that it's important to attack them and rip them off the boats. And, in fact, some of the crews have video of her doing this and, and letting them have a go. That's amazing. Yeah, like over, over the years, it's amazing. They've got vision of her ramming a boat, yep. ramming, backing yep. up, ramming it, and then she'll kind of step back, if you will, and a calf will then have a go, ram yeah. it, ram it. Follow she, mum. Yeah, she'll show it how to do it and then she'll go, you'll go. And then she'll go and have a yank at the, a rudder and then she'll go, you'll go, and it'll go down and yank off a rudder. They'll just swim off with the rudders and leave these boats floating. Because they communicate with that, is it sonar? or yeah. like, like You know that noise? I'm, I'm, th- I, I'm thinking and- back to Free Willy, the movie, when you know yes. Free Willy was in there and he, he kept communicating with the, the whales that were outside. I know it's a movie, but I know it this, is. Is my, this is my reference to bloody whales. I don't really know much about them. Well, here's my reference to whales and all mm. I could think about, and I keep thinking, I know where they're doing it. I know why they're doing it. Well, the scientists are saying, clearly this lead whale has had, I, they say something awful, they're not being trying to be awful, but they say, look, she's obviously had a terrifying incident or something like that with people, with a boat. Sure. She hates them. Mm. And so she's just made it her mission. We've we got to get these things. They're terrifying. We hate them. We, we're going to get them. And she's teaching her offspring mm. to do the same. It's amazing. And I just keep thinking they're doing it for Tilikum. They're, just, they're doing it for Tilikum. And I know we'll have listeners who go, I know exactly who you mean. And it's heartbreaking. Tilikum is the main orca from the documentary Blackfish. You know, Matthew. Yeah, right. Now, it, I'm not making fun of the the Save Willy, is that what it's called? Free Willy. Free Willy. Free Willy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Free Willy is kind of a big part of the documentary as well. It's kind is of it really? part of the story because it's about, um, Blackfish is about SeaWorld specifically and That's the, right, yeah. the way they caught whales mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. used whales in their shows. Mm-hmm. And this beautiful orca, Tilikum, who killed three people and it wasn't until he killed the third one that it became publicised and it's the most heartbreaking documentary I, I think I've ever seen, to be honest. Can you imagine how much true crime I've seen in my life? Yeah. But Blackfish mm. kills me. So here's a few little bits of it. And the thing that I think is really significant is that the trainers are such animal lovers and sometimes people try to demonise them or, or want to mm. sort of accuse them of mistreating the animals mm-hmm. and I just don't think anything could be further from the truth. I don't think people get They want to work with animals. Yeah, yeah. I know that zoos are, you know, people who are, you know, hardcore animal um, activists hate zoos mm. and that's definitely an issue but I've never met anyone who works in a zoo who doesn't love animals and mm. isn't there for that reason. Mm-hmm. So here's um, just some of the the people who worked at SeaWorld when Tilikum killed the third person because this is what this documentary is kind of about. Here are some of these people talking about how they got to SeaWorld. I remember you know, being probably in first or second grade watching National Geographic specials or Mutual of Omaha specials and seeing whales and seeing dolphins. And you know, as a little kid, just being really incredibly inspired by it, I never went to SeaWorld. I grew up in New York, so I went to the Bronx Zoo. I grew up on a lake with horses. We'd swim the horses. I grew up around the ocean. I came from the middle of the country in flatland Kansas. I from Virginia. Traveled down, did the theme park thing in, in Orlando when I was 17 and uh, saw the night show at Shamma Stadium. Very emotional, you know, popular music. And I was just, uh, I was very driven to to want to do that. Then I saw what the trainers did, and I said, that's what I want to do. I think we all think that, don't we, when we go to one of those places, but few of us then go on to uni to study, study, yeah, like animal behavioralism and animal psychology and mm. all that kind of stuff. When you're a kid and you see like a, a guy get shot into the air from two dolphins, you yeah. go, fucking hell, I give know. me that gig. I remember that because you and I both grew up in Queensland. So yeah. we went to SeaWorld and yeah. saw those shows. I, they didn't have a whale, did they? 
No whales there, mate. No. Uh, they, they dolphins? They have dolphins. They have uh, sharks. They have yeah, oh, um, the pelicans. Sharks. They have everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seals. Uh, yeah, seal show with the, the, the that's ball. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, they had all that. So, <laughs> yeah, I remember all that. Yeah, but I was thinking, we need, I don't think I've ever seen the whale show because these whale no, shows no are there. unbelievable, mm. these huge animals. And the enclosures they have them in are so tiny. They're awful. This is an interview with the lady who actually was killed by Tilikum. Um, her name's Dawn Branshaw, and listen to her. You can hear how much she loves her job, and she was a classic example of a person who had done so much study. She was that person who she studied animal psychology and all of that stuff, years and years at university. In her spare time, she was like me. She was like fostering everything from dogs to cats mm-hmm. to lizards to birds mm-hmm. to alligators to like Everything she was just such an, an intense, animal lover. Yeah, animal lover. Yep. And here she is, and you can hear how she thinks of her job and the way she works with the animal. This is Don Branch. Show Don is the senior trainer here at Shamu Stadium. It's a tough job, isn't it? Yeah, we really do go through a lot of physical exertion. You can see in the show we do a lot of deep water work, breath holds, um, very high energy behaviors with the animals. Um, obviously, they're giving out a lot of energy too, but we're working together and having a lot of fun as well. She captured what it means to be a SeaWorld trainer. She had so much experience that it made me realize what happened to her really could have happened to anyone. So anyway, in 2010, Mm. I think, um, Tilikum killed Dawn. They they were were training, uh, doing a training session, and there's video of it, I believe, in in the movie, and you can see that, that he just he got the shits. He did something wrong, or I think they were getting to the bottom of the bucket of his fish, and he and he realised that he was about to run out of fish in the training session. Every time you do a trick, you get a fish. Yep. And they 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 do explain it really clearly how they realised that he was just getting grumpy. Yep. And he turned. He turned mm. on Dawn and he dragged her down to the bottom of the pool and he shook her around. Right. And I think he 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 ate part of her sure. remains and mm-hmm. it was a really, really violent attack. And then after that, it was such a scandal that it came out that he had actually killed two humans before and the people who ran the theme park never, ever told the trainers that. They did not understand that they were working with an animal that had psychological problems. Right. That they should never have been in the pool with this this animal. And it's there's so much now that we know about Um, the way these animals are with their mothers and how the strong bonds they have with them and how emotionally devastating it is for them to be separated from their families. Yeah. So another part of the movie, and this is the last one because I don't want to be a downer, but it's, this is about, I think it gives a lot of insight into why these orcas Mm. around Gibraltar Mm -hmm. are acting the way they have. This is a guy explaining how these theme parks used to catch the orcas that they used in these shows. And as they say, they needed babies because they were the only ones. They were cheaper to travel, but also they were the ones they could train easily, easiest. This is how they did it. They had aircraft, they had spotters, they had speed boats, they had bombs they were throwing in the water. They were lighting their bombs with acetylene torches in their boats and throwing them as fast as they could to herd the whales into coves. But the orcas had been caught before, and they knew what was going on, and they knew their young ones would be taken from them. So the adults without young went east into a cul-de-sac, and the boats followed them, thinking they were all going that way, while the mothers with babies went north. But the capture teams had aircraft, and they have to come up for air eventually, and when they did, the capture teams alerted the boats and said, Oh no, they're going north, the ones with babies. So the boats, the speed boats, caught them there and herded them in. And then they had fishing boats with seine nets that they would stretch across so none could leave and then they could just pick out the young ones. Isn't that horrible? Mm. And their mothers would just Squeal. stay there and cry and squeal and they'd mm. take their babies away. Mm. Yeah, and that's how they got this whale Tilikum who, uh, yeah. And so after he killed Dawn, his trainer, they kept him in a tiny tank until he died seven years later. This 
because they couldn't kill him because that because there were so many activists by that stage sure lobbying for this orca and saying yep. you you're the ones who made him crazy totally they couldn't put him back in the ocean because he had no survival skills yep and they still owned him and there's not it's not like there's refuges for orcas mm. so he just lived out the last 7 years of his life in this pool that was t- so tiny sure it's heartbreaking isn't it it is yeah so, yeah. yes, I'm watching this story about the orcas and, of course, um, animal people who, who work with orcas are mm-hmm. saying, look, you know, we're really scared. What's going to happen to these animals? Because they're getting more and more aggressive. This is a shipping lane. Mm. Is someone going to have to kill these animals? They're very territorial. They're not going to mm. move. Mm-hmm. What are we going to do? Yeah. How does it work now for these kinds of organisations as far as like SeaWorlds and, and are they – are they I don't only know. taking in injured animals as a, a like to rescue them? I don't believe so. It's still a zoo. It's still a yeah. yeah. But I mean, look, there are the way that zoos run these mm. days is very different, and they're yeah, it's very about education, and it's yes. more about like we're, t- we're taking this animal in to look after it for a period of time, to then put it back out into the wild. Yeah. So like I've done a bit of stuff with um, zoos Victoria. Yeah. So I can certainly vouch for the way they run things sure. and, and their attitude to things and their attitude about conservation in the wild mm-hmm. and how much. Um, money they send in that direction and how much they're about educating kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and they also do education about, you know, where our batteries come from for our phones, mm-hmm. where they go if we just throw them into landfill and all that stuff. So mm-hmm. they're educating about a lot of conservation issues. Mm-hmm. I don't think SeaWorld would qualify as a zoo, mm. um, but I don't know where they're at now as a corporation. It's a theme park. Yeah. It's, a, it's technically a theme park. I know they definitely had to change a lot of things after. Yeah. After Tilikum um, went rogue that last time, that poor, poor, beautiful animal. Mm. And those trainers just, they just loved that animal so mm. much. And then to never be able to touch him again, to never be able to work with him and, you know, just heartbreaking all the way around. So Blackfish is the most amazing documentary, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and the fact that they are attacking boats. You know, and this is it. It's really bad it's news just, for them, actually. It's like for the, for the boat. You mean for the, who cares about the boat? No, for the orcas. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. it's terrifying yeah. for the people because a yeah. lot of these are just actually just, sightseeing. Yeah, but but so it's scary for them because they're actually not hurting anybody. But it's really scary for the orcas because something's going to have to be done because we can't let them just keep doing it because mm. they're going to get hurt. Well, the orcas. Yeah, they're either going to well, hurt themselves if they take on a bigger ship or whatever. Or as the conservationists are saying, or someone's going to shoot them. Mm. This is out in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. One of these days, are they going to come across three dead whales in the ocean because someone's just gone, fuck this, Mm -hmm. you know? So, Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of concern about, like, it's a cute, it's kind of a cute, interesting story. It's like, wow, wow, this is amazing. And it just reminds us how smart they are. I think it helps us understand Stay away from them. Let them live their life. I think that's what it helps human beings understand. Let them do Definitely. their thing. Don't drive your boat over to them. Absolutely good right. point. Like, yes. Like just leave your boat. I understand that, you know, yeah. ships and all that kind of thing can't really control, you know, let's dodge their whales. This but, is it. So mm. it's like who knows what's mm. driven this female to this point, mm. but it, but where to from here? You can't just say to them, oh, well, go, go over there and we won't bother you. You can't communicate that to them. Mm. So who knows? Just keep away. But it's a shipping channel. Like mm. it's a major mm. shipping channel on the planet. It's a, it's a straight. It's mm. a it's quite a narrow shipping channel. Mm-hmm. And they've just decided, you know, to police it, to mm. own it, and just mm. to kind of you know, tag everything that comes through. Mm. It's I'm laughing because it's it's amazing. It's brilliant. It's ingenious. But it's unfortunately animals tend to come off second best always. Mm. Mm-hmm. I don't think everyone's going to go, oh, fuck it. We can't go past Gibraltar anymore because then three whales. Mm. I don't think people are going to say that. Mm-hmm. So let's mm. keep watching on. Yeah. And, yeah, and Free Willy. And Free Willy. <laughs> have, you ever, have you never seen Free Willy? No. No. I no. was a little bit older. My brother did. My brother loved it. He's your age. So yeah. Petey Poops loved it. Mm. But they do talk about it, about this idea of like, it was a big movie, I think. You know. Well, it's basically this story. Yeah. It's basi- uh, the 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 story is that the the whale gets captured and separated from its mother. Yes. Uh, and then it cries the entire time and basically tries to communicate with its mum outside in the ocean. You know. Uh, and then it ends up uh, attacking. Uh, it oh. So it it ends up smashing its way through the glass. 
Um, and then the actual people end up rescuing it and taking it back out and letting it out into the ocean. So they talk about it in Blackfish a bit, mm. but just in saying, like, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. No, no, no. Well, it jumps saying, over the, it's a bit ridiculous. I mean, obviously, not, like, not the jumping over, <laughs> but in saying, you know, <laughs> because people would sort of say, oh, we'll just let Tiller come out then. And they're like, guys. You can't. You can't. Once it's been in there for that long. And also mm. they're um, they're very territorial and they're, they're close family groups. Like, if you put him out there, another group of, of killer whales would kill him. Right, yeah. That was part of his drama, wasn't it? That mm. he they put him in with these two big females that used to attack him every night. Mm-hmm. That's also what made him aggressive. That's mm. right. Every morning they'd go and open up and he'd be covered in scratches because mm. the two that they put him in with just turned on him every night, the poor little boy. Mm. And so, yeah, that's the other part of the reason why. Ugh. Mm. Yeah, not good. No. All right. Well, uh, that is the end of today's episode. Mm. Uh, if you would like to get in touch with the show, you can. And also, if you've got a secret for next week, uh, get on to Michelle's link tree on her Instagram page, or you can just go to the uh, link, which is in the bio of this podcast. It is whale watching season, I will say. So there are right. a lot of fantastic, reputable businesses around the east coast of Australia where you can go whale watching, where they will keep you at a safe mm. distance, and where you can contribute to the the safety of whales in our waters. You know, a great spot is Byron Bay. Yeah. Because you're on land and you can actually go to the point and just watch them from on land. You know, yes. you, can, you can take your binoculars down Central there. Central Coast them, as but it's well. It's beautiful, yeah, when you see them going past. Oh, it's yeah. amazing. You almost yeah. get used to it when you live in a place like that, too, yeah. don't you? You go, breaching. Yeah, Byron Bay. Nah. Chris Hemsworth there. You know, oh, God. The whales. That's who I meant when I said breaching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will see you next Tuesday. See you next Tuesday.